Peace, peace. Grand Risings, everybody. It's your girl, Morgan Renee Myers, tuning in with you all. 4 a.m. devotional. I'm a little late today. It's 9 o'clock. I normally try to be on here before 7. Around 7. But hey, y'all. So y'all know what it is. I'm reading from my devotionals from my Yana Vincent until today and Acts of Faith. Um, and then I've also been picking up on The Science of Being Great by Wallace D. Waddles. Put my girls up. So y'all not distracted. Distracted. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Today is on my end, Friday, January 14th, 2022. We are blessed to be here today. All right, ain't nothing showing now. Let me get my life up. My, it's on backwards. Jeez, let me get my life together. Sorry, y'all. I thought all this was together. All right. Let's hop into it. It's Friday. I'm feeling good. I'm looking forward to new opportunities the weekend, whatever today has for me. Today is January 14th, so I'm going to read out of Acts of Faith by Yala Van Zant. And it starts off with a quote by Bettina Flores that says, Successful people succeed because they learn from their failures. Do I need to turn some light on? I got just natural light today. How I'm looking over there, Facebook. Can you see me clearly? One moment. All right, let's see. That might be a little better. Okay. All right, so it says successful people succeed because they learn from their failures. But Bettina Flores. The most difficult things to face in life are the things you do not like about yourself. Ooh, not your ears, legs, hair, or those habits and abilities you feel are not up to par. It is the ugly little things you know about yourself that need a good, long look. You recognize it when you see it in others, but you make excuses for yourself. You may go to any length to cover a shortcoming while you quickly point out the ills of another. Since the very thing you want to hide is the thing that shows itself, you need to be able to say, I know that and I'm working on it. It takes a loving heart, a willing mind, and a sensitive spirit to get to the core of the self. But when you do, you can root out the seeds of ugliness. Um, and it ends with an affirmation that says, I acknowledge, accept, and embrace everything about me. Reflection. What do you know about yourself that you don't like? How can you shine love on those parts of yourself? Mmm, this is a good one. Really make you do some internal reflection. I'm not about to spill out my tea, but... Hmm. Yeah, I think sometimes we can get in spaces too where we're just like not feeling ourselves and we'll beat ourselves up. Um, but I think we got to be a little more graceful with ourselves. Grand Risings, everybody. We got to be a little more graceful with ourselves too. Not to the point where we are not doing the work because sometimes I think that could be the wrong. Um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? I don't know, just the wrong route to take, which is, oh, be, be graceful with yourself, do this, and you be so damn graceful, you're not getting shit done, you're not having no discipline, so there needs to be some balance there, um, but yeah, you, it's important to recognize your shortcomings and know what it is that you don't like about yourself so that you can work on it, you need to be able to say, I know that, and I'm working on it, it takes a loving heart, a willing mind, and a sense of the spirit to get to the core of the self, but when you do, you can root out the seeds of ugliness, and just imagine how many people are not taking time to figure themselves out which is why i always encourage you guys if you woke up and you gave some thanks and you drank some water and you stretched and you went over your goals and affirmations and you prayed and meditated and you moisturized and got your life right yeah you had a good start to get some to get some hearing and understanding about yourself all right moving on until today book for January 14th, and it reads, Life will work for me when I realize the only problem I have is the belief that I am not doing the right thing. I've got a question for you. How can you evaluate the process when you don't really know what the process is or how it works? Many of us believe that we are not doing life right or that things are going wrong in our lives when we have absolutely no idea what the process is or how it really works. Yes, we all have some basic idea of what to do and what not to do. Many of us know what we want. Some of us even believe that we know how we can get what we want. What few of us know with an absolute certainty is whether or not what we believe about the process is the truth about the process. 
The process of life is ever unfolding, guiding you, pushing you, preparing you for the next part of the process. Life often takes a twist or makes a turn that is frightening or confusing. Difficult challenges, bad days, upset feelings, moments of confusion are part of life's process. Perhaps these things are there to keep us alert, to make us stronger, or to test our resolve to keep moving forward. Perhaps they are not a sign that we are wrong, that we are failing, or that our life is about to fall apart. The only way we can know for sure is to be willing to walk through every part of the process, the good and the not so good, the easy part and the hard parts. Perhaps if we stop trying to figure out the process, the process will proceed exactly as it should. Mm. Until today, you may have believed that you were doing something wrong in life or that something was wrong with the pieces of life. Just for today, be devoted to embracing the process of life without fear by reminding yourself that you really don't know what the process is, but you are equipped to handle whatever shows up. Today, I'm in the process of learning more about the process of living. I say, that was good. Ain't much that needs to be said after that. I think she pretty much... Said what needed to be said. The process of life, y'all, we got to learn how to go through the flow. Life will work for me when I realize the only problem I have is the belief that I'm not doing the right thing. And I know we can kind of get down on ourselves sometimes, especially when things don't seem to be panning out like we would like. We start to beat ourselves up. Again, we got to have a little more grace. Not grace to the point where we're not being disciplined and we're failing ourselves, but grace to the point where it's like, okay, maybe I didn't get this right this time, but I can keep going. I can keep trying. All right, and I'm going to end today's devotional with <clears throat> The Science of Being Great by Dr. Wallace B. Waddles. We're on chapter 5, and it's entitled Preparation. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. If you become like God, you can read his thoughts, and if you do not, you will find the inspirational perception of truth impossible. You can never become a great man or woman until you have overcome anxiety, worry, and fear. It is impossible for an anxious person, a worried one, or a fearful one to perceive truth. All things are distorted and thrown out of their proper relations by such mental states, and those who are in them cannot read the thoughts of God. If you are poor or if you are anxious about business or financial matters, you are recommended to study carefully the first volume of this series, The Science of Getting Rich. That will present to you a solution for your problems of this nature, no matter how large or how complicated they may seem to be. There is not the least cause for worry about financial affairs. Every person who wills to do so may rise above want, have all the needs, and become rich. The same source upon which you propose to draw for mental unfoldment and spiritual power is at your service for the supply of all your material wants. Study this truth until it is fixed in your thoughts and until anxiety is banished from your mind. Enter the certain way which leads to material riches. Again, if you are anxious or worried about your health, realize it is impossible for you to attain perfect health so that you may have strength sufficient for all that you wish to do and more. That intelligence which stands ready to give you wealth and mental and spiritual power will rejoice to give you health also. Perfect health is yours for the asking if you will only obey the simple laws of life and live aright, conquer ill health and cast out fear. But it is not enough to rise above financial and physical anxiety and worry. You must rise above moral evil doing as well. Mm. Sound your inner consciousness now for the motives that actuate. Act actuate. I've never seen this word. A C T U A T E. Act actuate you. Okay. Sound your inner consciousness now for the motives that actuate you and make sure they are right. You must cast out lust uh -oh, and cease to be ruled by appetite and you must begin to govern appetite. You must eat only to satisfy hunger, never for gluttonous pleasure. And in all things, you must make the flesh obey the spirit. Child, ain't nobody try to hear that. We live in America where you can get anything on any corner that tastes good. Oof. People is foodies. People got whole YouTube channels. Um, mukbangs. Child. I don't like this little bit of truth. <laughs> the truth hitting hard. You must cast out lust. 
damn it. It be the fine ones that be getting me, boy. I, I really had to have a heart to heart myself the other day. Some of the stuff I've been crying over and upset about when it comes to these men folk. I put myself in a lot of these positions, but it, it was the fine ones that led me to the trap. That damn lust, boy, be be strong. It, it be a stronghold, if you will. Stronghold. All right. You must cast out lust and cease to be ruled by appetite and you must begin to govern appetite. You must eat only to satisfy hunger. We don't we don't like to eat just to satisfy hunger. We like to eat because it, it tastes good and the buffet is nicely priced and it's something to do. It's a social activity. So when you're hearing something like this for the first time, the farmers be the devil child. Ooh, I be like, Lord, why you make it so fun? I say that in one of my um in my poems in my book. It's uh and I'm talking to God and I'm asking God all these questions. I'm like, why this and that? Why you make a brother so fine and not expect me to uh what I say, hold on. Why you make him so fine and not expect me to to wanna uh, what I say, what I say. Uh, 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 hold on, y'all, because it's gonna bother me. Dear God, is this Yoni egg gonna really help me heal myself? I feel like I've fallen deep and I need your help. I just haven't been myself. Uh, why create people if we always need each other? Not as when you remember, you remember when I seen a highlight. I think of then it's daily struggle fighting temptations. Yeah, it's a daily struggle fighting. <laughs> I was going through it. I wrote this damn book. I said, I want to be Jill Scott prepared. What if I don't ever get married? Am I supposed to find all my comfort in you? I'm talking to God. When can I ascend to my highest vibration? I think I'm over this lesson of patience. It's a daily struggle fighting temptation and too much libations. Why turn water into wine when grapes do the same thing? Why make men so fine and expect me to stay away? Why even give me eyes? Voluptuous breast, flesh. <laughs> Oh boy, this from my book, uh, The Celibacy Chronicles, child. I was going through, okay? You heard. What a, <sighs> video pause on Instagram. This internet connection must be choppy. All right, let me hurry up and get through this book so I can still with y'all. All right, so you must, that just, that just, that, I guess that was the word for me. You must cast out lust and cease to be ruled by appetite and you must begin to govern appetite you must eat only to satisfy hunger never for gluttonous pleasure and in all things you must make the flesh obey the spirit you must lay aside greed have no unworthy motive in in your desire to become rich and powerful it is legitimate and right to desire riches if you want them for the sake of the soul but not if you desire them for the lust of the flesh excuse me Cast out pride and vanity. Have no thought of trying to rule over others or of outdoing them. This is a vital point. Mm. There is no temptation so insidious as the flesh desire to rule over others. Nothing so appeals to the average man or woman as to sit in the uppermost places at feasts, to be respectfully saluted in the marketplace, or to be called rabbi, master, to exercise some sort of control over others is the secret motive of every selfish person. The struggle for power over others is the battle of the competitive world, and you must rise above that world and its motives and aspirations and seek only for life. You must... Make the flesh obey spirit hard, but we work in child, right? Cast out envy. You can have all that you want, and you need not envy any man what he has. Above all things, see to it that you do not hold malice or enmity toward anyone. Ooh, to do so cuts you off from the mind whose treasures you seek to make your own. I think that's an important point. I'll pause right there. Um, even people that have like done you wrong, like I've had some experiences with some people that I just did not see the relationship going in that direction. And I had like angst and ill feelings in my heart toward them. And now I'm just trying to get to a space where it's like, I just chalk it up to that's just a part of the game. Like, because life is really a game, like, and we got to learn how to play it. And some people are playing their role and we just get caught on the crossfire, but we learn lessons from these people, from these situations, what to do, what to look out for, how we can trust intuition better, how we cannot um, miss red flags. Um, and again, that go back to that sometimes beating up on yourself or feeling like you're not doing things right if I keep attracting these type of people or energies or not foreseeing some of the things that's going to um, 
take place with interacting with them. But instead of going around harboring all this hate, and that can be difficult, especially when it comes to, like, people that have been victimized. Like, you know, what I'm talking about. Um, like, I definitely can understand why somebody will hold hate in their heart after somebody victimized you. But I also think that it, that also, that can lead to dis-ease, which we call disease, but dis-ease in your body when you are stressed and you're, um, you know, you're harboring certain feelings that are not of your highest self, that can really take a toll on you. It's stress on your body. So we have to come to some way to um, get through that therapy. Again, tuning in, <clears throat> direct communication with your higher power, your higher self, whatever it is that you subscribe to. Um, so let me go back. Uh, cast out envy. You can have all you want and you need not envy any man what he has. Above all things, see to it that you do not hold malice or enmity toward anyone. What is... Uh, malice and enmity me damn i need a dictionary i'm gonna have a dictionary by me next time because i'll be on both my phones and my other phone somewhere dead right now um i got an idea what it mean feeling what you feel and not replacing it with bad habits or bad couple mechanism mm, oh that's a tough one right there because you know the first thing you want to do is do something that ain't probably the best for you but it'll be soothing in the moment um Above all things, see to it that you do not hold malice or enmity toward anyone. To do so cuts you off from the mind whose treasures you seek to make your own. What's the name of this book, sis? This is The Science of Being Great by Wallace D. Waddles. I'm assuming he also wrote The Science uh, of Being Rich because he referenced it earlier. And he said it's uh, the first volume of the series, The Science of Getting Rich. But this is The Science of Being Great. And it's written, I believe, from a Christian perspective. Um, but, you know, you could get uh, knowledge from anywhere. Um, above all things, see to it that you do not hold malice or enmity toward anyone. To do so, cuss you off from the mind whose treasures you seek to make your own. And he has a quote, he that loves not his brother loves not God. Mm. It's a lot of weird people out here. I don't be loving all of them. I got love for humanity as a whole, but I'm not in love with a lot of people, and I don't care for quite a few. Malice is the intent or desire to be evil or do evil. Mm, mm, mm. And I see that a lot on this internet when we be joking, and it be all these different memes or or, or uh, statuses and stuff about you know couples that's not working out or somebody wrong somebody and they want to mess up their whole entire life. That's malice. Having the intents and desires to be and do evil to these people, to get them back, to hurt them back, to hurt them to their soul, to crush them. And that, that will be getting me, especially with, I guess, like the cheaters mostly is where I see some of this stuff. Like when somebody is hurt, like they go to some extremes to like make sure the other person feel it. All right. I ain't saying this wrong. I, from As a human, I understand the need to want to retaliate. But every time we turn to the word or something spiritual, it's always like, nah, don't do that. Let the powers that be. Cause it's like, I want to put some force on them. Lay a thump or two on them. Yeah, he that loves his brother loves not God. Lay aside all narrow personal ambition and determine to seek the highest good and to be swayed by no unworthy selfishness. Go over all the foregoing and set these moral temptations out of your heart one by one, determined to keep them out. Then resolve that you will not only abandon all evil thought, but that you will forsake all deeds, habits, and courses of actions which do not commend themselves to your noblest ideals. This is supremely important. Make this resolution with all the power of your soul and you are ready for the next step toward greatness which you will find explained in the following chapter. Okay. So that was the, uh, this chapter was called the uh, mm, preparation. Okay. The science of being great. I kind of want to end with my poem that I had started reading y'all just because why not? All right. It's called, uh, it's called conversation with God. And there was an artist who did this piece for the book. Her name is Nikki Dylan. Nikki James, but Nikki Dylan on social media. And it's the picture of a woman. And Nikki had a fro at the time. And this is a reverse image of her. 
And I believe she says, is that the Star of David? I'm not sure. But this is like incense smoke and it's the chakra colors. And you know, she got like little books over here and a little candle. And I, I gave these artists um, pretty much free range. I told them the titles of the poems. I may have sent a few of them the poem so they could read it and get a feel for what they wanted. But for the most part, I just told them what titles were available. And the artist rocked out with their own interpretation. So this was her interpretation of Conversation with God. And there's this song that I wrote. <clears throat> I don't really sing, but I like to. Ryan, she did a good job. And it's called How Can I Improve? Um, and so it's like, how can I improve? How can I improve? How can I, how can I, how can I improve? How can I improve? How can I improve? How can I, how can I, how can I improve? What I need to do, Lord, all I need is you, Lord. I'm trying to find my way and I depend on you. If you really hear me, Lord, pull me up right now. Show me the way out. I, how can I improve, Lord? How can I improve? I'm so thankful for your blessings. Praise is overdue. How can I improve? Lord, how can I improve? How can I, how can I, how can I improve? So that was the song that go with, it's on an audio book, that go into starting off this this poem. And so, cause sometimes I just be singing gospel to myself, to my God. And so then the poem starts off as, Conversation with God, lights, white candles, some incense, sets out crystals that <coughs> correlate. Hey, uh, uh, damn, most time I've been drinking. <laughs> We see a nigga's real names get tripped up real quick. All right, so lights, white candles, some incense, set out crystals that correlate with the seven chakra sits in front of mirror with notepad, writing utensils, and voice recorder on phone, prepared for when the ideas and affirmations arise. Glass of water, a plant, pours water into plant as I call out names of ancestors that have transitioned, give thanks, ask for protection, wisdom, and guidance from the powers that be are in alignment with everything working out for my good. So this is the poem. Dear God, why am I still here? What is my purpose? I can't say I've done much intentional searching until now. Why was I misinformed early on? Why do I have to unlearn and relearn to know who I really am? Just so I can have a story to tell? Dear God, what do chakras and Christ have to do with this really? Everything is connected to you. So are the tangibles even necessary? There are poetry books with your words. Talking about the Bible. You're one big author. We have imagination in common. I mostly talk to myself since I'm made in your image. When I write, is it acting or lying? How is it that your spirit lives in me when I've done things and felt convicted after? It seems you allow disasters to occur quite frequently. Is this an example of, of blasphemy? Is masturbation really wrong? I mean, it's just me. How, when even focusing on you, my body has natural tinglings? Like sometimes I'll be in church and I just be horny. I'll be ready to go get some dick after. These are my thoughts and I put them in a book. Dear God, is this yoni egg really going to help me heal and love myself? I feel like I've fallen so deep. I know I need your help. Just haven't been myself. I remember the good little girl I used to be. I feel tainted and I want to feel free. Why create a people if we always need help from each other? Really, it's you we should reach to. They teach like you're in this outer realm, something in space and heaven, an external place, not an internal exploration. You're involved in all unions. Love is ordained by you. Is there a soulmate for me? Or will I always be a free spirit? Always just friends. Always just business. I want to be Jill Scott prepared. If y'all haven't heard, Jill Scott, she got a song called Prepared. And it's beautiful. I love it. And it's talking about being prepared for marriage. I want to be Jill Scott prepared. What if I don't ever get married? Am I supposed to find all my comfort in you? When can I ascend to my highest vibration? I'll be like, Lord, is my is my time up? Like, this evil-ass world, these fucking bills, can I come home? Like, what's up? But, I mean, I do like being a human and being in the flesh. But sometimes it's like, is the programming over? Like, the fuck? Alright, am I supposed to find all comfort in you? When can I ascend to my highest vibration? I think I'm over this lesson of patience. Um... It's a daily struggle fighting temptation and too much libations. Why turn water into wine when grapes do the same thing? Why make men so fine and expect me to stay away? Why even give me eyes? Voluptuous breast, flesh. 
Why is life a test that I'll either fail or pass? God forbid I come back, reincarnation. How can I hear from you and not be confused? It's me. All the meditating in the world, yet thoughts always pop up in the most unnecessary times how do i take control of my mind i put my body on break so i can hear you clearer cleansing the spirits of the many men i've encountered i only want to elevate to become the best version of me i love you how can i improve and then i ended with the song again how can i improve how can I, how can I, how can I improve? Yeah. So, that's that. Good times. I want to go back through this book and have like some, uh, because it'll be five years this year in December that it came out. And I would like to um do something with it. I didn't really give as much promotion and, and, and in depth to it, but it's a really good book and it talks about some really good things. Um, that we need to be talking about and now that I really feel like being back on a, a celibacy journey It just seems right. So I want to honor my artists Maybe have some talk backs maybe have some um because it's an audio book as well Maybe do some um some listening link ups where we could just listen to some tracks and just discuss, you know The poems, you know have an artist talk back. I think that would be really cool. So I'm brainstorming how to figure out how to make all that shake amongst other projects that I got going on So yeah, but I appreciate y'all for tuning in Again, if you have not already taken some time for yourself, you've woken up. If you haven't given thanks, drink your live alkaline water from Black on Land. You need to get on that. Um, make sure that you do your stretching, your affirmations, go over your goals, moisturize before you get your day started. Take care of you because you matter, okay? It's Friday. Let's have a good day. Let's set some good intentions for our day and our weekend. And I hope that y'all, I just hope it's a smooth one. Y'all be easy out here in these streets now. I'll tune in with y'all later. Peace and love.